Uh, it's been fantastic that we've had all this discussion about what's been happening at CSW this year and the panel discussion is now going to move forward to planning for what's going to happen next year. And as has already been alluded to, the theme next year is Beijing plus 20 to mark the 20 year review of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. So I'm gonna ask each of the speakers to speak very briefly about what they see are the key issues they'd like to see raised and how Australian women might be able to be engaged in that process. Um, Joe's also uh, working on technology, so at some point hopefully we'll have a slide about other mechanisms, human rights mechanisms that you might be able to be engaged in. And we'll also be able to share that slide um, through the email list as well. Um, so while Joe is working on that, I might ask um, then the next speaker to speak, who um, is Carol Shaw. What I want to talk about is the shrinking space for opportunities to interact with the NGO, uh, with, with the international forum. Um, and I do want to acknowledge in this respect that Australia's really been good um, and to, to acknowledge their efforts to broaden the CSO space, not only at CSW but other international forums. And I do want to use this opportunity to encourage the government to continue that process. Um, as we are aware, CSW and the Beijing Platform for Action establishes uh, norms and standards relating to women's rights and entitlements that provide women's organizations, networks, with the basis for lobbying and advocacy at the national and international levels. CSOs are key not only to monitor, advocate, but also to implement some of these policy decisions that are made and should most definitely be part of that process. Um, Negotiated documents, uh, as we've heard, uh, and international processes, they evoke a range of responses uh, represent, representing diverse regional sectoral concerns. The more conservative voice is the one that's rising at the moment. And I'm sorry if I'm a bit jumping here. I'm going from my notes so I can cover it very tightly. Uh, more conservative voice is rising and challenging and the language in past agreements, and is also challenging the Beijing Platform for Action language. So we're going pre-Beijing language for those of you who are working on language. Um, CSW 57, with no outcomes, was a real wake-up call, and this was the push for CSW 58. The first reading of the outcomes document was undertaken before CSW commenced. Processes are changing, they're trying to drive, UN women at the international level are doing a number of strategies to try to gain political will, to try to move processes forward, and it was key that we had an outcomes document this year. Um, a number of interventions um, and processes are happening, and let me just flick forward to this. In 2010, this is around civil society engagement at the international level I'm talking about. 2010, UN Women set up a number of global, regional, and national civil society advisory groups. These are to serve as forums for dialogue and sustained engagement. They've been continuing up until this date, up until now, and they're due for review this year. So we will be uh, the civil society groups who put names forward for the global advisory group will be starting to monitor and evaluate how effective these groups have actually been. So it's not only UN women who will have that opportunity, it will also be civil society. Because, you know, I don't know how many of you have been feeding through these processes or have heard feedback from the groups, but it's quite difficult to get input back from these groups, even though they're meeting uh, fairly regularly. Um, for CSW NGO Committee, which is the one that organizes all of the parallel events and coordinates the CSW engagement at um, CSW, they are setting up and have begun the process of setting up an NGO CSW Asia Pacific group. This is for any ECOSOC accredited organization to join. Um, and I can send more information out about that as the executive is formulated. That will be one opportunity to feed through into the regional level. The, uh, let me have a look. As Alison mentioned, um, another process which is starting to happen. Now, 
we're in a review year this year, which is, means that it's 20 years since the Platform for Action, but we've also had the review of the ICPD. We've had Rio Plus 20. We've had the Millennium Development Goals, and we've got the Sustainable Goals. And what's happened is all of the different NGOs with the different interests and who've been engaged in this process are now coming together for the post-development agenda. So regionally, ECOSOC, which is the... Um, the UN in, the, in, in Bangkok and the UN Women Regional Office have s formulated a new consultative mechanism based on the ICPD mechanism, which is currently underway. Now, this consultative mechanism will be drawing funds from the source where the former NGO regional forums used to take place. So prior, many of you will have attended or will know about the big NGO forums that have occurred regionally, which feed into the Beijing or the CSW review years. Uh, these are going to be very difficult to hold in future, so they're trying to tighten the consultative mechanism and have a consultative forum of NGOs which will be attached to the regional processes. So leading into the future, these are going to be the more key mechanisms to get messages into. Um, that, that is currently being developed and the invitations, the terms of reference are currently being set and the, the invites are going out. Um, that's really, those are really the key mechanisms I wanted to point out because as this year is a review year, it's going to be more important to get your messages ready early. The time frames, and I think Joel might be talking on time frames, are very different. The consultative mechanism will be set up and in place by the meeting in August. There is a meeting in August, um, which is the SCAP Committee on Social Development on the 18th to the 20th. That will be the first meeting where this process will be trialled. Following that, it will be attached to the high-level government meeting at SCAP on CSW Beijing Review in November. Following CSW next year, there will be um, some form of summit-level meeting in September 2015, which will help define the... Um, the new development agenda and that's really why CSW this year was so important and the NGO engagement at CSW this year was so important because it was the first, as Alison said, it was the first of the high-level government meetings to actually discuss gender and development in that context and I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Very quickly and not quite answering the question, I just thought I'd use my uh, one and a half minutes to update you on uh, UN Women's global campaign for Beijing Plus 20. Um, so UN Women will be launching on the 22nd of May a global campaign aimed at engaging individuals, civil society, governments and business in both celebrating the Beijing Platform for Action and, and sort of paying tribute to the vision that, that was uh, its formation but also looking at where the gaps are and where the points where we can actually invest in accelerating progress are. So it will be resource limited as always, um, but it will be a series of events, online consultations and online discussions and also media engagements. And um, so the National Committee will work to try and engage with all of you over the next couple of weeks to, to see what we can do as a sort of soft launch in May to try and get the conversation started in the public realm, um, but then to map UN Women's global campaign. So each month over the next 12 months, there'll be a priority theme. The National Committee will be mapping those. If your organisations are keen to do that as well and have thematic discussions um, alongside us, we would welcome that. Um, but there's also a whole series of materials and logos and stuff that will be will be launched that you can all use um, in order to be able to put your um, support behind the Beijing Plus 20 review. So it's a bit of a watch this space. I might talk to the Office for Women about getting um, access to the email list to come out to you all uh, about uh, what we know. And, and I guess what I would say is, I apologise, it's, it's information's coming out daily, but it's very limited at this stage. So I suspect it'll be one of those horrible things where we need to, as a sector, do what we can with the limited information, launch the concept, and then work out how we really build momentum here in Australia and, and what of the global campaign works in Australia and which bits.
don't work, but it's exciting and the concepts look really good and they've actually done a new logo for Beijing. Um, and I think some of that stuff will help us refresh community interest in the issues. Thanks very much, Julie. Hello. No, um, likewise, I'm going to keep myself fairly short and um, discuss a process which is running alongside um, the development agenda and the Beijing agenda, which are um, going on at the moment. Um, given that we've heard quite a lot from this room that um, we can't take um, women's rights as being um, a, an accepted um, basis for development agendas, for uh, we can't be sure that um, Beijing will stand in its entirety. Um, we need to be pushing the basic issues about women's rights at, at all levels and in all processes. And one of the ones that's happening at the moment is that um, YWCA Australia and a number of other um, stakeholder organisations um, are running a consultative process um, for preparing the Seed or Shadow Report. That's the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Um, there's a process where Australia's um, progress in meeting that, um, the requirements of that treaty um, is being evaluated. Um, a shadow report is being prepared which will discuss um, Australia's progress um, against a number of benchmarks. They're looking to highlight a number of key issues in that report. So it's not going to be um, an all-encompassing report, it's going to be a snapshot approach. But the consultation for that is on at the moment. Um, and the more people who get involved in that, the better. Um, if you're interested in being involved in that, you can go to the ERA website. Um, and on the left-hand side of the homepage, there is a sign in here to get information about the shadow report. And you can put your name down there and you'll start getting the information. Um, one of the things we are doing is in May, we expect to be holding a webinar, um, which will involve both an introduction to CEDAW um, and then the second session, a consultation on how we're doing. So I would strongly um, encourage organisations, particularly organisations that haven't had a strong international background previously, to get involved in that process. It's a good place to start feeding your experiences through into the international sphere. Thanks, Helen. Judith? Given the time restraints and my passion, I'm going to stick with notes as well. Um, just for those who may not know a lot about uh, the Platform for Action, I just thought I'd touch and just say that uh, the Platform for Action diagnoses the specific problems for women in each of the critical 12 critical areas. And it proposes strategies and objectives for concrete actions. It also identifies what actions are to be taken by the specific actors in order to achieve those objectives. So that's the focus of the Beijing Platform for Action. All of the objectives, objectives and actions are interlinked and mutually reinforcing. So um, uh, given my passion for uh, um, women in the economy and that's the issue I would like to focus on in our reflection and going forward. The barriers to women's economic development um, and to seek some recommendations that could support women in strengthening their human security, um, both domestically and internationally. Human sec security in the context of military and non-military threats, so uh, human life and uh, uh, the dignity of women and people uh, is, is, is its central theme. In this context, uh, I'll focus on economic security, as I said, which is closely linked to human security and also linked with political, cultural and social environment. Some of this is reflected in uh, a regional research that uh, Gerard took uh, a couple of years ago on security, both human and economic, of women. So in their personal surroundings, the community and their environment, for example, violence, essentials of life and freedom from gender discrimination. So the lack of uh, economic security for women limits their access to resources, their opportunities, and their economic aspirations. Work or predictable income is central for women's well-being and can pave the way for broader social and economic advancement. So strengthening individuals, their families, and their communities is in imperative. Uh, I'll mention in closing that Ger International produced an Australian NGO guide to CSW um, two years ago, and we're now considering how we will upgrade that in light of the numerous changes that are continuing and going on at CSW at, the, at present. So as I said, I'm trying to keep it as brief as possible. I'll leave it at that. I'm sorry? Mobile, yes, we hope with mobile phone technology, given the resources. Thanks very much, Judith. Julie? Um, on that note, um, we, we as a new delegation, a new alliance, use Gerard's guide and um, we acknowledge that their fantastic experience and mentoring, uh, you know, helping us 
you know, being able to eff effectively participate in CSW. So I suppose um, on reflection, what's really important for us is that we realise that we need to be there every year, that we need to be in this space. And we went last year because the theme was violence against women. And we went this year with a smaller delegation, but we were heartened to see how much violence against women and girls was on the agenda and how critical it was because we know, and it's part of a waiver's core value and, and understanding is that, that violence against women is caused by gender inequality and also causes gender inequality. And so we're very focused on making sure that violence against women and girls is across all of the themes, all across all of the, um, the goals and, and how that interacts intersectionally with other social inequalities, which is very, very critical. And, um, and we were very fortunate to be able to take Margie Charlesworth here with us to the delegation this, this year and, and heartened to see through the strong advocacy that women with disabilities issues were specifically mentioned and documented and, and concretised in, in some of the agreement. I just want to finish by saying that um, it's really important, you know, we, I absolutely acknowledge the, the tragedy of, you know, what we see highlighted around, you know, the Nigerian girls kidnapped, who were sitting their physics exam, I understand. You know, just the whole issue around girls trying to get an education and being sold for the equivalent of $12 you know, as, as for sexual and, and labour servitude effectively. But also, you know, over the Easter weekend, we had six domestic murders in Australia, women and children. Mm -hmm. and, and the amazing highlight that we have on this issue now, and, and for the first time we're seeing on the front pages of the mainstream media their photos and their names and I think that's a critical step forward to to not otherizing this violence against women and girls that it happens to some women by some men and that actually <coughs> we have to reflect here that violence and death and early enforced marriage and FGM are all just the really horrific end of gender and social inequalities of how women are oppressed and subordinated and seen as other and not as good as men, and that entrenched deeply in our society. Unless we fix that attitude, we won't be fixing violence against women or gender equality. So we've got to keep an eye on the non-physical <coughs> violence. We've got to keep an eye on the sexism, the otherism, and that we're not good enough. Thanks very much, Julie. Did you Mar want to say Margie? Margie? I just want to say Margie ha wasn't prepared to, to speak to anything uh, to eat today, she has, but she would she uh, has want to. Yes. yes. So I asked her at the last <laughs> minute, so that's fantastic. My time at CSW was such a privilege to be able to sit with over 6,000 plus like-minded people and talk about gender and the issues associated with gender was a luxury I have not had since my days at university. However, and perhaps like previous years, I couldn't help but note that I was the only woman with disability from Australia at this year's CSW. This year's agenda was about the Millennium Development Goals. And as we've heard that we now have a standalone goal of gender equality, there is still a way to go before women with disabilities reach this goal. Being my first time at CSW, I was surprised by the level of access we had to our official delegation and that they wanted our input into the negotiation process. And being the only woman with disability I took on the role of keeping the many issues of women with disabilities within the negation process. It is not enough to merely include women with disabilities on paper or under the category of people with disabilities. This is because gender and its biological effects are different on men and women despite abilities. Thus is seldom recognized and as a consequence the many issues and fundamental rights of women with disabilities are either ignored or just denied. Such exclusion can include equal and adequate education and employment, rights to safety and freedom from violence, 
and the fundamental rights to equal citizenship, to name but a few. So where to from here for women with disabilities? First I think we need to maintain a high level of awareness to the fact that the needs of women and men with disabilities are separate and should be treated as such. Secondly, I think we need to be prepared to send more than one woman with a disability to CSW to ensure that we might capture many more issues facing women with disabilities in the global context. Thanks very much, Margie. This is what some people were talking about um, in terms of the, the kind of range of things coming together. CSW isn't there, but it is bringing together some of the other processes that are there around the Sustainable Development Goals, around the Framework Convention on Climate Change, was, which is also happening, um, uh, the G20 process, the, the um, General Assembly, um, and... It's not possible for you to see that, but what you can do is get a sense of, of the numbers of things that are happening, how busy the processes are at a governmental level, how busy the processes are for, uh, for NGOs in terms of tracking things. So one of the things I think is really important for us to think about as, a, as an NGO group is to try and do a bit of mapping about who's covering or interested or engaged around what sorts of processes or would like to be so that we can do a bit of a division of labour and uh, a bit of tracking on some of these issues. I think we are not going to all be able to cover everything um, and if we can find a way of trying to coordinate and organise ourselves so that we're able to, um, to really get some good coverage about the rapidly moving agenda that's happening internationally between now and um, well, CSW next year but then up to the September 2015 conclusion of the post-2015 development framework. Um, and, and I think that really matters because of the slide I skipped over before, which is really the opportunity that I think it presents um, for, for really trying to, to move forward a transformational agenda, not, you know, a better sharing of, um, of a, a sandpit that's framed on, on other people's terms. Um, I think there's a really clear in, uh, understanding now of the limitations of the MDG process and the CSW 58 this year was really important in filling in those um, gaps and limitations, particularly around sexual and reproductive uh, health and rights, around unpaid work and its fundamental um, uh, importance for uh, for women's rights um, and around intersectionalities, um, violence against women among others. So, uh, going the wrong way. Um, so it, there are lots of things coming together, um, lots of language being negotiated. From what I understand from um, someone who spoke to the Australian Council for International Development's post-2015 working group, uh, about a month or so ago she'd been one of the advisors to the high-level panel. Um, one of the things that, that she talked about, and it comes back to some of the things that Helen was talking about before, that... There's negotiation around language, but sometimes the way in which you can move things forward is by having some very key, smart ideas around how things might be measured. How do we know if, we're, if we think this is an objective? What's our indicator? What's our measurement? How are we going to do that? Um, and she was really advocating for, um, for some people to pay really close attention around the whole question of data. And on that, I think I'm really looking forward. There's two things to say. I'm looking forward when on the DFAT YouTube channel, um, a video of, of Karen Ground from the American <coughs> University, who used to be the gender advisor at USAID, she gave a fabulous presentation last year to the um, DFAT ACVID uh, gender equality workshop, really highlighting the, the key data, strategic data priorities as she saw it. Um, uh, I've got notes from that, which I'm really happy to share via the... the um, email list that's around or the ERA website which focuses on some of the data. I think that, so that's one area where I think it's not just the words, it's also about how we're going to measure change and progress and no success and getting clear on really strategic um, objectives there I think is really important. Um, there is on the Australian Council for International Development website um, a, a, a sort of very quick and dirty paper IWDA was involved in doing last year about just trying to track and this is 
in November last year, so things have moved forward, what some of the key converging priorities were around gender in the post-2015 process. Um, that paper's there on ACFID's website with this list of priorities. I'd be really interested if people think some of those have kind of uh, have moved on or, or changed. Um, obviously, many more things have come out, but I think you can you can see across the international women's movement some real convergence against some key priorities, and I think trying to um, try to be cognizant of those and hold on to that as sort of a parsimonious list. Parsimonious was Karen's word. Uh, parsimonious list of priorities, I think, will be really important as negotiations start getting tighter. Um, this is just a snapshot of something that um, IWDA has been doing for a couple of months now, just trying to keep ourselves across. I've got an exceptionally smart young intern working with us and trying to keep track of what's happening around gender in the post-2015 agenda. And uh, she's coming in one day a week and, and working with us, really happy to feed in other things if other people are seeing that. She's trying to track the open working group and other um, highlight other key papers like the, um, the feminist declaration on post-2015, for example. Uh, so we're trying to be a bit um, kind of curating, if you like, or, or being a bit of a guide, um, and it helps us keep ac across it. Uh, so that's we're doing that on our website. Um, and then again, we just did a quick and dirty logo um, one goal, all goals to try and highlight visually a bottom line for post 2015. Um, if it is available to any and anyone and everyone who wants to use it. We deliberately didn't put an additional strap line on it because we thought organisations might want to um, adapt it and personalise it for their own website. But if you want to stick a button on your... can organise with your um, organisations to say, you know, my organisation thinks this is our bottom line for post-2015, um, we can send you, you know, high resolution, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, on that. We haven't, at this point, got the resources to to really kind of coordinate an advocacy campaign on that. We just say we've invested in a little bit of design time in, in working on this and really happy to share it with others um, if, if there is interest. Thanks very much, Joe, and uh, thanks to all our speakers. Um